Hey everybody. Today in this video, we are going to explain how to get light burn communicating with our Aurora. Now, uh, one of the first things that we're gonna have to do is make sure that we are on. And there's a few versions of on with this machine, so don't get confused. So the first thing we're gonna do is turn our key on. Uh, we need to make sure, uh, kind of like in the setup video, that our e-stop is not depressed. Um, you will have zero lights over here for the on button if it is pressed in. So a quick twist, we'll pop it back out, and now it's on. Now we can see we have a blinking red light. Uh, the reason for this, to make sure that we have full power, the, uh, the emergency switch, the key switch, and the on switch all control power going to the controller. So if we want to communicate with the controller, these things need to be on. Um, as you can tell, when the emergency switch was on and when the on button is not pressed, we still have light. So it sounds like, it looks like it's on, but it's not. It's still in basically a hibernation mode. So now that we have the e-stop on, not activated, we have the key switch on, lights are on, our red dot for our autofocus towards the front side is on. We're going to hit the on button. And now it should be on completely. You'll hear fans kick on. And that basically is letting you know that the controller has power. You need to have all of that on as well as having your USB plugged into the back and then into the computer. All this has to happen for us to communicate with the machine with Lightburn. All right, let's move over to the computer and we will discuss installing Lightburn downloading it, uh, picking the right controller, and then getting all the information off of the uh, thumb drive so that you have all the correct parameters installed ready to use. Let's hit it. One thing to note before we go over to the computer is I like to name all of my devices uh, in, in the size of the lens. So if you look at the lens, you have your F160, F210, F290. So depending on what machine you have, like a UV is going to have a different size lens. Um, sometimes the non-MOPA um, fiber lasers will have a different size lens. But I'm naming the device as the lens that I'm using. So each lens will get a different device in Lightburn. And we'll explain that a little bit more when we get over to the computer. So on the knowledge base, we have a document prepared for installing Lightburn on non-pro, and this would be any of the EasyCAD 2 machines. So unless you are using EasyCAD 3, this is the document for you. And you can search it up uh, just so you can cross-reference this video and, um, and the documents on how to do this. Now, assuming you've already installed Lightburn, I just want to make sure that when you did install, you clicked on the drivers, um, installing the EasyCAD drivers used by Galvos. This is very important. It will not communicate uh, if you don't install this. So just FYI, just wanted to make sure that when you download, install um, Lightburn, that you make sure at the very end of the installation, you install this driver. Once Lightburn is installed with the drivers, we are going to go into the device menu here that um, in the laser window. So it should be right here, bottom right hand corner, click on devices, and we're going to create manually. Now, you can do find my laser, but um, it's going to sit there, search for it, communicate, and then you're going to have to do the things you would have to do when you create it manually anyway. So let's create manually from the get-go. And what we're looking for is our JCZ fiber. Clicking on that and then next, um, it's going to prompt you to import EasyCAD config. And this is where we need our thumb drive plugged in. Um, so I'm gonna click on import EasyCAD config. And then I'm gonna scroll down to my Thunder thumb drive. And you can see here it says the Aurora 8. Um, the tree structure, the labeling should be very similar in all of these, but it may be a little bit, bit different, so just look for the correct menus. 
fiber software. This is where the file that we're looking for is located. If we click on this and expand the tree, we can see that we have EasyCAD 2. So we open this and the file we're looking for is plug. Uh, this plug is going to be, uh, will contain the mark config zero and that's the one that we want. So if we click on this, it's going to load itself into Lightburn and that contains all of our uh, frequency settings and parameters for your specific machine. Now note that the core file did not load, uh, mostly uh, because there's probably several to choose from, um, so it doesn't exactly know what to look for. So what we're gonna do is we're naming this, like we, we discussed when we are looking at the lenses, uh, we're naming this device, this machine, um, to correlate with the lens. So that every time that we switch out the lens, we're picking a different device. Yes, of course, it is the same device, but the configuration for it is a little different. So I click next, and here is where I'm going to name it. So if it is the Aurora, um, maybe I have the 100 watt, and then I want to label this as the 160 lens. Okay, now I click next, and the don't pay attention to the, um, the X and Y length. This is going to change when you load the core file. The, the sizing and the, the, the core file or the correction file for the lens uh, contains all of these, um, these settings and parameters. Next, and finish. Okay, so once you have that device created, you're going to go into your device list and select it. So we just created the Aurora 100 watt 160 lens. Uh, you can see I have another one here, and this is kind of how you're going to have it set up. If you have three lenses, you'll be uh, you'll have three different devices with the lens configuration. So now we want to load the. Uh, the core file or the, the configuration file, correction file for the lens. Let's click on our 160. For this, we have to go up to our wrench and screwdriver settings option. And this is where we load our Galvo configuration or our lens correction file. So click on load. And now we have to go into our thumb drive again and we should have a correction file where those lens correction files are located. Click down on the tree, and you can see that I have a 110, and this they label them in working area, not lens size, which is very, very confusing. I hate it, but uh, this is how they label them. And Obviously, we're working with the 160, which is the smallest lens we have, so we're going to select the 110 core file. Open, and uh, real quick if I can, let me see if I can move this over. We can see that the width and height are set here. Um, it may change. Yes, it did change with the core file. So now this core file is loaded. It is ready to use that 160 lens. If I wanted to set up the 190 lens, I can select that one, and then again, go into my wrench and screwdriver, uh, load the core file, and we're gonna go down to our thumb drive again, and we know this one is the 200, it's the, the larger version. Open, we can see that we now have a nine inches of working area, um, so this is now programmed into our configuration for this laser for two different lenses. So anytime I swap lenses, I'm going to come in here, choose the correct machine. Um, you know, obviously they're the same machine, but the correct lens that we're working with. So switch over, changes the work size, uh, changes the core file, and we're good to go. So 
now, as long as you're connected, you should be ready and we can move on to the next video and that'll show us how to um, prep and be ready for engraving. Uh, basically auto focusing and switching out the lens and stuff like that. I'll see you on the next video.